However, since the founding of the Entertainment Software Ratings Board in 1994, a close eye has been kept on the content in video games to ensure that they are dispersed to specific, age-grouped audiences and to make people aware of the subject matter withheld in each title. With the establishment of the Motion Picture Association of America in 1922, and the explicit content warnings of the Record Industry Association of America in 1985, it's no surprise that a rating system would be inaugurated for the fast-growing medium that is the gaming industry. The ESRB has a few different ratings, but the one I want to focus on is the AO, or Adults Only, rating. A game that receives an AO rating means that it has so much violence, sexual content, and or profane language that it's awarded the highest and most restrictive rating a game can get. Commercial availability of AO games is practically non-existent. There's only been 27 games that have been rated AO by the ESRB, and out of those that have officially released, only two of them are console games, and they are both Rockstar games. One of them is Grand Theft Auto San Andreas for its hot coffee minigame, and the other is Manhunt 2. Now the minigame was removed from Grand Theft Auto and it returned to its M rating, but Manhunt 2 was a little different. It wasn't just one or two aspects of the game that was offending everyone, people everywhere felt that the entire construct was nihilistic, destructive, and an all-around harmful approach to the gaming community. The British Board of Film Classification director David Cook stated, where possible, we try to consider cuts or, in the case of games, modifications which remove the material which contravenes the board's published guidelines. In the case of Manhunt 2, this has not been possible. The UK, along with several other countries, banned the game before its release because it received an AO rating. Both PlayStation and Nintendo refused to carry it along with most major retailers. Rockstar North was forced to conform to the standards of the ESRB and edited the game, putting filters over the kills and removing the award system for performing more gruesome executions. After the revision and the game was given the M rating, PlayStation and Nintendo would carry it again, but there was still a public outcry concerning the extreme nature of the game's content being readily available. A group of U.S. Senators, including Hillary Clinton, issued a press release requesting that the game get re-rated to its original rating of AO, stating that Using the Wii Remote Controller to reenact the on-screen murder is basically teaching a child the behavioral sequencing of killing. And the BBFC refused to lift its ban, stating Manhunt 2 is unremitting bleakness and callous of tone, which constantly encourages visceral killing with exceptionally little alleviation or distancing. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. The Manhunt series delivers copious servings of violence, but the target audience isn't children. You can easily decipher that from its M rating and no easy mode. Having only normal and hard settings assumes the player is seasoned enough gamer to understand the challenge ahead. Rockstar is trying to respect the intelligence of the consumers purchasing the game, but to little or no avail. All this really begs the question of, are the intense amounts of gore in the game really necessary? The Manhunt series is rooted in themes such as voyeurism like in media, right in limitless control, human experimentation, dealing with psychological complexity, and the sadistic nature that human beings hide. As visceral and atrocious as Manhunt can be at times, its overall purpose is to tell a compelling story that grips the player with white knuckle ferocity and forces them along an anxiety-fueled nightmare ride. This game was taking steps in directions that was previously unexplored in mainstream gaming. We're not talking about an indie creator making this game and just releasing it, no. This is a company with a massive fan base that had a widely known reputation around the world and still do to this day. I'm not saying other companies weren't doing this at the time or beforehand either. I have a very high level of respect for devs like Running With Scissors and Paradox Development, but none had the widespread reach of Rockstar games. From an outside perspective as an artist myself, watching Rockstar take this exceptionally risky chance was a message to me saying, don't be afraid to take chances like this. Regardless of public pressure, media backlash, or the risk of taking on too much controversy as a whole, they moved forward with this project. The ideas and innovations Rockstar North put into making Manhunt is what made it so much more of a masterpiece than people credit it for. So many were not ready for a game like Manhunt to be released in the mainstream media, and that is the controversy with violence in the media. How much is too much? 
If we look into the film industry, we see many different examples of extreme cinema in the horror genre and its subgenres, but also in mainstream non-horror films as well. Think about how excessive Saving Private Ryan is with its horrifyingly realistic depictions of war just within the first 24 minutes. Now imagine if Steven Spielberg had filmed that with zero gore. Would it have had the same impact? I mean, both of these are trying to tell a story, one based on actual events, one fictional, but does non-fiction have extra features like excessive violence and gore just because it's based on facts or history? I mean, they both use incredibly graphic detail to complement their story by giving a greater emotional impact, whether it's watching bodies explode on the battlefield or hacking someone's throat open with a machete. So what's the real difference here? What makes us condemn one of these and praise the other? Well, I believe the answer is simply this. Time. Thomas Edison helped pioneer filmmaking in the 1890s, experimenting with moving pictures and opening his own film studio. Mainstream gaming didn't exist until 1970s, the point being the maturity of the film industry overshadows the gaming industry by nearly a century. Film has had time to grow and advance with generations of filmmakers laying the foundation and progressively altering the course of history in cinema. Video games have yet to reach the higher echelons of other mediums such as cinema or music but that doesn't mean we shouldn't strive to get there. Games like Manhunt are steps in the right direction, and even though it was publicly ridiculed and displayed for being outright offensive and seemingly vacuous, we need games like this. And we need developers and publishers who aren't afraid to stand in the spotlight and propose what they believe to be right. Manhunt may always be remembered for being one of the most violent video games ever made, but to me, it will be remembered as a defiant stance against public pressure in hopes of propelling the video game industry into a new era of understanding.